For business news videos and insights, check out the O2 Business blog by clicking the link on screen or in the description below. Hey guys, you're watching BTech. My name is Basil and this is my review of the Huawei P9 Plus. If you told me two years ago that some of my favorite phones on the market would be made by Huawei, I'm not entirely sure I would have believed you, but this is definitely one of my favorites. You're watching my review, I'll tell you why, but before I do, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, subscribe. It's how you stay on top of everything that we do. First off, this is a beautiful phone. I close my eyes and in the hand it feels soft at the same time, quite bold, metal frame, brushed metal back, kind of blasted metal sides, heavy chamfering, curved glass around the edge, so slight 3D glass element. This is a premium phone and it costs a fair bit of money too. You're gonna spend over 500 quid on this thing. In the past though, Huawei phones never really warranted a really, really high asking price, but this phone in its entirety does. Aside from that premium look and feel, you've also got a solid phone as well. It really, really does feel like it's beautifully, lovingly constructed. It's stylized with that Leica strip around the back housing the two cameras and ultimately it looks like one of the classiest phones on the market hands down. USB type C at the base with a bottom firing speaker and a 3.5 mm headphone jack. Up at the top of the P9 Plus, you've got an infrared blaster, which you don't on the Huawei P9. Right hand side, volume rocket and power button all incredibly easily identifiable with just a thumb thumbing over them. You don't even need to look at the phone to know what you're pressing. Left hand side, SIM slot and micro SD card slot for expandability, while around the back those dual 12 megapixel snappers, one monochrome, one color, the Leica branding and dual flash, as well as a very, very well-placed fingerprint scanner for instant unlocking of the phone and some gesture support within the user interface. Like I said, a very, very good phone in terms of the in-hand feel, in terms of the look as well. Thumbs up, Huawei. Switch on the screen and you have a pixel density of 401 pixels per inch. That's full HD at 5.5 inches. The same as an iPhone 6S Plus, for example, but you've got AMOLED screen tech here. So it all looks really punchy, really vibrant, and really deep all at the same time. It's responsive. It feels beautiful swiping over it. Like I said, that expensive in-hand feel is just reinforced by that AMOLED screen technology and the ultimate picture. What's also really interesting is you can dip into the settings and to save battery, you can downsample everything to 720p. So it puts less pressure on the CPU. Ultimately though, it doesn't really make everything look worse, which goes to show that when you've got a good quality screen, things don't necessarily need to be full HD, quad HD and all that jazz. I never ever found myself wishing to myself this phone had a higher resolution screen than it does. Viewing angles are great. General responsiveness is great. Again, another thumbs up for Huawei with the P9 Plus. In terms of the user interface, Emotion UI has always been one of my biggest drawbacks when it comes to Huawei. This time around, it's exactly the same as that on the P9. And if you've seen my P9 review, I told you that it's the best version of Emotion UI to date. There are still some elements that I'm not a huge fan of. For example, the notifications tray and quick toggles, shortcuts menu, they're a little bit fiddly because you can end up swiping notifications out of the way and trying to access your shortcuts. They fix that black Gmail notifications issue that has plagued Android devices and still plagues some like the MediaPad M210 made by Huawei. And you've got a smooth experience, maximum app compatibility, didn't have any applications grump at me that they wouldn't work or they forced closed or anything like that. And I didn't get an ounce of stutter, which is really good by anyone's standards, let alone a user interface that's been plagued by a few issues historically. You've also got press touch on the Huawei P9 Plus. Now this is almost identical, if not identical to force touch on the iPhone. Just hard press on an application shortcut and you can expand quick actions. So for example, you can add a contact by scanning a business card. You can also quick dial your last three dialed numbers. This would be great if it worked outside the Huawei suite of applications, like even down to the Google Play applications that Huawei knew were going to be installed and could have made some actions for, but it doesn't. It literally just works within the stock Huawei ones, which suggests it always will, and there won't really be third-party app developer support. I might be wrong, but as it stands, I wouldn't see that as a key selling point of the phone. As far as the cameras go, you've 
you've got a dual camera set up at the back, one color, one monochrome, and you've got an eight megapixel camera at the front. The dual camera set up around the back I reviewed with a P9, and having used it more with a P9 Plus, I'm really starting to appreciate its idiosyncrasies. When you crop right in on a picture that's taken in mediocre light, that's probably the worst thing you can do to this phone. It really does put it as, at a disadvantage. But when you're outdoors in good light and you're taking like pictures that are just sceneries, landscapes, I took this to a wedding last weekend, you will really get some stunning, stunning pictures from it. If you get the composition right, then this will take care of the contrast saturation and nine times out of 10, make sure everything is looking really, really good. Better than a lot of other technically better cameras out there. It also has some advanced features as well. You can have pro mode activated, so you can do stuff like light trails. You can really, really change everything from the ISO right through to the shutter speed. Only thing that you can't change is that aperture. It is a fixed F2.2 aperture. Again, that might lend to say why it's not the best in low light, but it's still a really, really good, solid camera, very competitive, especially given the fact that it's the same as on the P9, and the P9 is a lot cheaper, meaning that the P9 is one of the best cameras that you can get for the price. The video records up to full HD at 60 frames per second. No 4K, no real bother for me. I don't mind it too much. Um, I've never seen 4K on a Huawei device. The Kirin processors have never supported them historically, but having said that, full HD, 60 frames per second, as you can see on screen, it looks pretty sweet. Again, low light, it's gonna really showcase one of the shortcuts of the phone, but as long as your lighting is good, you're gonna get one of the best pictures out there. The image stabilization also isn't too bad, although it could be a little bit better. Wouldn't have minded optical image stabilization on here one bit. The Huawei P9 Plus is also an excellent gaming phone. For starters, a 64 gig of internal memory on here. MicroSD expandability is helpful, but won't mean that much to gamers. You've got that beautiful, beautiful screen. In addition, you've got a really good in-hand feel. Slender but rounded sides just make it comfortable. The downside is the fact you've got that bottom firing speaker, so it might be covering it up. Although thanks to the size of the phone, if it's at the top on the right-hand side, that's quite unlikely, unless you've got even bigger hands than me, which is also quite unlikely. The Antutu benchmark results clocked in at just shy of 100,000, meaning whatever you want to play on this thing, you'll likely be able to without breaking a sweat. Meaning that with that 64 gig internal memory out of the box and with no SD card, this could be the best gaming phone around in the Android camp. The HTC 10, a little bit better in terms of the benchmark performance and also that memory if you have an SD card to hand, but if you don't, P9 Plus all the way. Other multimedia looks sensational. That full HD AMOLED screen pops beautifully. Application support for Android is, well, brilliant really with Netflix, iPlayer, whatever you want to throw at it. And obviously Huawei complements the whole experience nicely with an onboard video player with great codec support. And you can also download your own codec support as well. Really can't gush enough about enjoying content on this screen. With Huawei having a foot in connectivity the world over, it's no wonder that this thing is very, very well connected. You've got NFC, you've also got Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. There's also something called Wi-Fi Plus Signal plus and a whole load of other pluses. What that tries to do is intelligently, whether you're roaming or whether you're at home, decide what network is going to get you the best signal. It used to be, well, a little bit rubbish to be honest when it first landed on the Huawei P8. It would throw my networks right off, but now, refined for the Huawei P9 and P9 Plus, it seems to do a brilliant, brilliant job. With that 3400 milliamp battery under the hood, just rounding off that experience perfectly, I can get a full day out of this thing. I really, really enjoy using it. And that means that paired with the HTC 10 and Samsung Galaxy S7, the Huawei P9 Plus is in my top three phones of 2016 to date. What do you think? P9 Plus really doing it for you like it's doing it for me? Let me know in the comments section below. And like I said at the beginning of the video, if you like the channel, subscribe. It's how you're gonna stay on top of everything that we do. Thanks for watching BTEC. For business news videos and insights, check out the O2 Business blog by clicking the link on screen or in the description below.